Hi, I am Christy Clemens Hoffman. I am a level three QHHT practitioner based in the Kansas City area. And I am starting this series, the Ascension Sessions. This came about after I had a client in May, back in May, who had a phenomenal response from her subconscious, the SC as we call it. And there was a lot of great information that came out about ascension, about humanity, et cetera, et cetera, that I thought really needed to kind of be its own thing. She and I talked about it, and she was such a good subject, we decided to bring her back again. And I decided I would start this series um, using primarily this client, but although there may be others that come up in the series, but as a way to talk about ascension, earth changes, humanity changes, human growth and potential that I think could be useful for many people. Now, if you look at the other videos on this channel, and I hope you do, there are other QHHT sessions that are interesting and of value for a larger audience. But this series is going to specifically be about what's coming up, what's coming ahead. So I recorded this, um, this session after I brought the client back. I recorded it on August 4th, 2022, here in my office in the Kansas City area, which we're, we're, we're going to be actually addressing that in this. So what happened was she had another fantastic session. And I set up my recorder, and um, everything looked like it was recording as it should, but when I got to the end of it, it didn't record. Now, typically I set up two recording devices, um, but this time I, I did not. I only had the one, and the recording failed. Now, this has happened like maybe a handful of times, about five times. Mm, yeah, about five times in my six years of doing this. And it's disappointing. So, you know, Dolores also, Dolores Cannon, that is, also had this problem on occasion that a recording would fail. So what happens is the energies get too high. Um, the subconscious decides that, mm, no, we're not going to share this. And I think what happened was that I had used the client's name several times. And there were one or two questions that turned out to be fairly personal that came up and I think the subconscious was trying to protect the client so I will watch for that in the future so that is probably the most pragmatic aspect I think of what happened so what we did we decided that it was such a great session we would sit and dissect it afterward now so what what follows here is a recording of us dissecting that portion of her session and the questions having to do with ascension and human growth and potential in general. Now you'll notice that we were absolutely famished after her session and we both had a, a snack that we were working on so um, I, I apologize if there's any you know yummy sounds going on. <laughs> and um, what was interesting about this session was that um, we had some we had some questions from you guys, from people who are fans of my Facebook page, QHHT and more with Christy Clemens Hoffman, and I'll put that in the show description. Um, I'd asked, we're, we're having this session coming up. Do you have any questions you'd like me to bring forward? And that, you know, I got some questions to ask during the session. So there was that, but there was also information about um, sense of self and perspective that I thought was very interesting. So we talk about that quite a bit. But we also make mention of mass shootings, or in particular, a mass shooting. Because in this particular session, we started with a past life, and then we moved to, um, moved to the subconscious. In future sessions, we'll go straight to the subconscious. But in this session, we did turn to a, um, another lifetime, which turned out to be remote viewing. I'm not sure that that lifetime was expressly connected to the client, but she got a full story on another life. So we may dissect that a bit more in the future. Um, but it was the life of a mass shooter. 
in the 60s or maybe early 70s. So we're still doing a bit of research into that to see if we can pinpoint exactly what that was. And which would have, that would have overlapped with, or more or less concurrent lifetime with that client. So we're still parsing that part, portion of it. And so we'll be talking about um, the ideology of this mass shooter in this video. So there's quite a lot to dissect. I would love to hear from you. So please blow the comments up. Um, questions, especially if you have questions to ask for the next session. We already have one set up for September, so I would love to hear from you about that. Anyway, see what you think, and this is a conversation that will be continued. Okay. Okay. So then we got to the part of ascension mm -hmm. and asking questions about that. So the first thing that came was that we can't process it while we're in human bodies. And so how did you interpret that? That you can't play the game, you can't analyze the ga mm -hmm. game while you're playing it. So it's the equivalent of trying to like watch tape or watch a video of you playing something at the same time you're playing it. You can't do both. You're, the, you're here, you're in the moment, you're doing the thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the moment mm -hmm. doing the thing. If you worry about what you're doing at the moment beyond like basic morals and values, then you're not doing the thing. You're not living if you're worrying about ascending because ascension right. is not living. Ascension right. comes from it. One thing comes from the other thing. We can't really perceive the ascension process while we're in human bodies. No, because we're being humans. Mm -hmm. And that process itself is beyond human comprehension. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So ascension is more or less a mindset is what came out of this. And that the goal was the experience, not the end game. Mm -hmm. The experience. So the experiencing, and this is something my guides have been talking to me about for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So we have to experience the human experience. Yes. You know, when we come here to be human, we've got to experience what that is. To its full extent. And, mm -hmm. and being a human is not necessarily worrying. I mean, people worry about the afterlife or what happens. Mm -hmm. all that. But then, you I mean, the, if you think about it, basic Christianity mm -hmm. is living a life here to ensure something happens next time. Right. That's the same energy. It is kind of the same energy, isn't it? Yeah, that it's like, oh, well, I have to do it right here to get to this next place. Right. That's the same. Yes. That's that same energy. Right. So you have to, the, the goal is to live the best way possible now mm -hmm. so that we can really understand the ascension process. Is, I mean, is that, am I interpreting well, that? Well, or that, like, I don't get to, I'm not going to enjoy this process here if I'm, wor if I'm worrying about where it gets me the next time. Mm, mm -hmm. And so with Christianity basically saying that, you know, earth, human life, you're born to live, to, to have a goal. There's right. a goal mm -hmm. to which is there's something beyond life that is the goal. And the ascension people, when they talk about the ascension process, it feels like that same. The goal of life is to do this versus the goal of life is just to live it. Mm -hmm. So like that the seeking of a of a next step gets in the way of just living a good life. Right, got it. Or being present. Right. So to experience Earth, you have to fully Im immerse in the experience. Sit in the hardness mm -hmm. of it is another thing you said. Sit in the hardness of how it is to be here on Earth. So then you had <clears throat> the analogy of digging a hole in the ground. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And planting your feet. So I... If you're going to be on earth, be on earth. Like, <laughs> get in there. Put, stick your feet in there and be there. Mm -hmm. Floating above right. is not, that's, that's not what being on earth is. Mm -hmm. That's just not it. Right. So digging a hole in the ground and then plant your feet there. Got to keep your feet there. Um, we react as humans, as uh, human, as humanly as we can. Mm -hmm. React to things as humanly as we can. And if we're not was... reacting as humans, then we're not being on Earth. Because to be on right. Earth is to be a human. Mm -hmm. Like, they go together. Right. That, um, 
the human response is to help. And this is the, then I ask things about, like, what do we do about, like, the, all the mass shootings and yeah. all the unrest and the riots and things like that. Human, the human response is to help. Each person can help improve situations. But where we run into trouble, if you remember this, is when people have different views of what it's, it's about. It's actually happening, yes. Right. And so we can't, if, if we think of a mass shooter, mm -hmm. or we think anything, think, you know, there's lots of things you could unpack. If you think that a, that a virus is a political ploy, mm -hmm. of course you're not going to wear a mask because you don't think that it's actually a virus. Right. So the way that we look at the situation and our reality is powerful enough, our filter is powerful enough, mm -hmm. if we're not all looking at the same problem the same way, and that doesn't mean we agree on everything, but if we're not all looking at it at this is what it is, mm -hmm. then, we're all, then we're not going to be able to together come up with a solution because there's there's weightedness to it right there's a weight to it and so like a mass shooting there's people that are like this means we need more gun control there right are people that said this means we need more mental health some people say we need less video games we're all looking at things from a different reality right versus focusing on the fact that there was a human who did like that when you focus on the little pieces of it that's all you're going to see in that, and so you're not going to be able to work with others to come up with a solution beyond what you believe to be the solution based on your view of the situation. Right. Right, because you you see what happened in very different ways. Yes. It's colored. Everything's colored by our personal experience. Oh, that's interesting. Because, I mean, what's what's interesting is that, you know, the past life that you went to or the, the what you were able to view was like literally everything was colored yellow mm -hmm. as like a bad movie flashback. So that's interesting too because have you ever seen the movie Inside Out? Oh yeah, I love that movie. So I use that as an example when I teach teachers, mm -hmm. right? That like every experience is colored mm -hmm. by an emotion. Mm -hmm. So, and then part of my dissertation is understanding like identity. And so our identities create our filters to experiences. Right. And how we experiencing things is based on our identity and our beliefs and our past experiences. So because nobody has had the same exact experience, nobody experiences the current situation the exact same. So that's why sometimes when we talk about things like reality, we can, you and I can agree on a few things. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. What can we agree on? Not necessarily right. what we are not agreeing on. Mm -hmm. And so what right. are the main things? So if you talk about right. these issues, what are the things that we all can agree upon? Let's start as simple as, is the sky blue, mm -hmm. right? And let's go build, build, build from there. What mm -hmm. do we agree on? Mm -hmm. Which was, I think, was interesting because part of what came out of the session, too, was um, how to help kids who, well, what came out was um, teach people in, how, in power how to find people seeking power. Yes. So, of course, you, you know, you had a, a, a view of a mass shooter mm -hmm. and how schools and parents can help identify the kids mm -hmm. who are seeking to have power and control in their lives, yes. who don't have it, who are going to seek it in all That's the right. wrong places. Yes. I'm thinking of that song about looking for love in all the wrong yeah. places. Um, and so that, that was just kind of interesting how to... How to operate with that when everybody has a different view of what that looks like. So I thought that That's was a And so when you have parents <clears throat> that look at, say you have parents that are introverts that like to sit at home reading books. Right. And then their little kid, all they do is sit at home reading books. Those parents are going to go be like, yeah, this is my kid. Whereas other parents would look at that and go, there's something wrong with them. Yeah. And so until we can all agree on some basic, like, what should we be looking for in terms of people who do harm um and then it but it's hard because then parents will still always look at their child differently than other people do right absolutely through their own filter through their own filter. so we've got all of these filters yes so anyway i thought that was very interesting so um back to like what can we do improve to improve our situations each person can help improve the situations so in each reality we respond to their reality what can I do in this moment to help, given my reality? Yeah. Right? So I thought that was a very important thing to bring about 
when talking about ascension. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's probably going to look different to different people because of how they view it. Exactly. Right? And so to make it a, a blanket, right. those are ascension symptoms, doesn't make sense because everybody's reality is different. Everybody's reality is different. Now, I actually wrote an article a couple of years ago about ascension symptoms, mm -hmm. but they are very varied. And, and everybody's, depends, yeah. and it depends on each person. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So, okay. So what can I do in this moment to help? How can it, but then there, then it came up that there needs to be a unifying event. Mm -hmm. That kind of, if I'm being honest, kind of chilled me, right? I'm sorry. I'm no. Did it chill you that's, too? That's how people change. Right. Look at 9-11. Exactly. Look at Pearl Harbor. Exactly. Well, and there's even a book, another Pearl Harbor or second Pearl well, Harbor, something like and that. That's what you don't want to go get towards. And I feel no. like, and I feel like, COVID, right, was an opportunity for people to come together and take care of each other. Right. And it didn't happen <clears throat> right. because the reality, people's realities were 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 changed by other things. Yeah. And we had an opportunity to love thy neighbor. We had an opportunity to take care of each take other. care of each other, and we didn't do it. In fact, people blatantly went out of their way to say, "I don't care what happens to you." And until something like that changes, stuff's going to keep happening. And yeah. I hate that. Like I hate to be like a, I don't feel like I'm me saying like doomsday predictor, but it that's what that's what is a catalyst for change. But even the vote yesterday. Yeah, right. Huge deal. Of course, we were recording this August 4th. 2022. 2022. And the vote was actually Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. August 2nd so, in Kansas to, um, to prevent, yeah, to protect the right to choice. Yes. Right. For, for, okay. Kansas. for Kansas. Yes. And the fact that, like, everybody predicted due to the nature of, whatever, you know, right. what Kansas is usually considered. But overturning Roe is horrific. Horrific. Horrific, yes. But it did this. Like, and like those horrific, like we don't want to get to horrific things though. We want to be able as humans to come together to, to make positive change for everybody without penultimate event, I think that's the right word, events Pen right. that force us we shouldn't i don't want to be forced right to do it i want i would love us all to be in a space where we could all help each other collectively without the pandemic or without a, a supreme court decision that takes away rights or without a huge hurricane like it'd be right. nice if we just did that and i and there's just a lot of woundedness in people that prevents them from seeing that reality right i think that, i think there is and it goes back to Identifying the kids who are feeling isolated, mm -hmm. who are feeling not included, mm -hmm. and then working to bridge that gap, mm -hmm. right? So that we are all unified, so we don't have to go seeking separate realities mm -hmm. and seeking a reality that obviously is not what I'm looking at, but hey, these people accept me and they believe me. So they believe something different. That's, that's what it is. It's acceptance. Right. I want to find somebody that accepts my reality, which is why we doom scroll that's why we scroll right we scroll to find someone that agrees with us to be like yes right we find someone to disagree with us to be like stupid right because we are constantly looking for, for validation mm -hmm. validation Either or right 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 so this uh, this unifying event uh, and then you under under trance you likened it to the fifth Harry Potter and of course I'm a big Potter head. Oh, because you know what I meant by that. Oh, totally. Yeah. Where everybody's going, Voldemort's back. Voldemort's back, and the yeah. Ministry of Magic is like, no. no, it's not. This is this is propaganda. This is not real. It's not true. And then he, until he saw it for his eyes in that moment, but that's not what it should take. There's we no. should believe. You know, we should be able to look at the variables. And right. make a um, reasoned conclusion. But the problem is, is when people don't have reasonable variables, then they're seeking and looking for, like, right. not everything is perfect science, but at some point we have to learn about how to, oh, what's the right word? So, like, qualitative data is all about the credibility of the source, right? So right. quantitative data is about 
reliability, validity, we're looking at numbers, we're looking at sample size, right? Um, qualitative data is about your the, the credibility of the person doing the interviewing, the person being interviewed, mm -hmm. and the, the tools utilized. So we have to sometimes look at the credibility of the person saying the thing and then weigh whether or not that is worthy of it, worthy of information. And right. but that is a yeah. Well, and, and I kept finding myself asking things like, okay, so the ascension, is it like, is it the soul that ascends? Is it the body that ascends? Or am I just thinking about this in a, you know, the wrong way? Because you are not in the wrong way, but in your reaction. Right, because exactly. Because you are in a different, a specific. Because I can't imagine anything different. Because our brains, yeah, exactly. Right, because I can't imagine anything different. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. So this uh, cataclysmic unifying event and I so I said okay well you've got my attention um, what what does this look like yeah. and then the information came look at the sky I don't Day. know what that means right you know and then I had to think of that movie look don't look up don't look up I know it was scary mm -hmm. which I think that movie is again that's a really great movie of it falling on deaf ears yeah They're, the people that need to watch and understand that movie will won't, won't get it no. which will get it yeah, they won't get it. And so I think it's propaganda, propaganda right? Exactly. And so right? that's where, um, yeah. Yeah. And we have to touch people the same way. So in that 95% of people have to agree about an event without, without their filters. Um, and then, the, again, I was asking about the cataclysmic event, and then you said well, you're, you're thinking about it like a human. And I said, you know, am I thinking about this wrong? You're thinking about it like a human. Again, we think of things in human terms because that is our human focus, which is where we need to be right now. Exactly. And that's why sometimes my frustration, you drive a fly. There's like a whole Disney princess vibe you have out here. <laughs> Outside of my office, I yeah, know. All these animals I love in. that. Um, yeah, all of the, and they come when you come. I'll take it. Um, is we as like to to, you know, are, is things like astral travel and you know meditating and going into galaxies and all, right. is all that stuff cool? Sure, but that's not living on Earth. Right. That's not. That's not living. That's not being a human. That's it doesn't necessarily help you in your human life. No, it's fun and it's it cool. can be enlightening and we can learn a lot of things. Um, but go again, like that idea, again, I'm not judging people's choices. People you know, do what you want, but right. like going off the grid, not interacting with people. Right. And you know, that's not living not on earth. earth right now. Right. It's, it's, that's not what earth is right now. And so there's a way to be a part of earth and, you know, hopefully not participate in harmful, you know, structures. Um, because to go so far the, a certain way is to escape Earth. Yeah. If all I do is meditate, then I'm not actually on Earth. Right. I'm in a different realm. I'm not participating on Earth. I'm not participating on Earth. I'm not living my... And again, do some people come to Earth to live that kind of life? Absolutely. Right. But that's not necessarily engaging in earthly type things, which some people don't come to Earth to do, which is fine. But it's not... That's not what Earth... Is how it's, not, it's not what's happening on Earth right, right. Now. We come here, well, my you guys have been telling me for a long time, you need to put the experience in human experience. Yes. Right? Experience a human experience. Yes. Okay. So then um, I asked further questions about ascension, uh, and then came out, souls ascend, not physical bodies. Yeah. Which totally makes sense. Yeah. Where our bodies die. Yeah. The souls, and then how long has this been going on? Souls have been ascending since the beginning. Yeah. It's just a... And so... Um, you understand your path in this moment. So then you said something uh, it was about how we're only now really living in our bodies. Because, oh, so that... Remember uh, that? Yeah. Um, so what human bodies had to be put through um, in past times was horrific. Right. Building the pyramids, building the Great Wall of China, building... The cities that we have. Working in sweat factories, working in coal mines. Well, women had to put through a childbirth. Oh, my God. So, I, I mean, human, but I don't think it would seem that to to be a, a, aware of the body, like maybe people are today, wasn't possible because they would have lived in tremendous, aware of the tremendous pain mm -hmm. and, the, and the suffering that was happening at the hands of people. Right. And so, I believe. 
I believe, or whatever, whatever, that this, whatever came through me, this um, idea that, like, this is, we've, we've had to survive as humans. Right. And we've never been allowed to thrive. There's always been a small group of people who's had the ability to thrive in a sense that they've had enough money and whatnot, but they were still and resources. At the, they were still at the bane of human, of like nature that we're not at the moment. Infections, injuries, Air sepsis. Right. Like they didn't have modern science that we did. So the bot, so to get to here, there was a tremendous amount of, of, of bodies being used right. to move society forward. Right. That it's, we don't need bodies to do the, those same things anymore. We have machines. We right. have, and so this is, we are still not out of kind of this like survival mode of living. Right. The, the human body, um, where to, that we don't need to be that way to survive, survive anymore. Well, the, in fact, there was a line that came out. Your subconscious said, most of the human timeline has been spent as animals. Yeah, we've just been... Just there. a body. Yeah, just just right. surviving as animals. Just surviving yeah. on the planet. Yes, getting, right? moving somewhere. Now we've got, in a way, we've got the luxury of looking at ascension. What are was our souls yes. doing? Yes, and there was a small group of people that right. did that right. in the past. But, they were, but the luxury was of that was few and far between. Right. Now that we have the time, so in my research, I, my research real quick, so I'm studying identity, and specifically in teachers, and so I've been doing a, like a deep dive in the theory of identity and the concept of identity that we know wow. as today like what's my identity right it didn't come around to like the enlightenment and reformation because prior to that people were told what their identities were right you were born into a religion you were born into a social center so right. the more we have freedom to explore our, the human experience the more we have we ask these questions right. that maybe only a small group of people asked a long time ago now right. we have the luxury and the time but it was questions. also a certain class that was yes. assigned to look at that. Exactly. Exactly. And now everybody can look into yes. that. Everyone has access to it. Right? The magic of YouTube. Yes. The, right? So that was interesting. Okay. So then we had some questions from Facebook because I posted something mm -hmm. about this. We we're going to yes. be doing this today. So um, how do we help others who are on the ascension path as well? It's like, what is our duty there? And that's a really common question. So the answer came to only help those who ask. Focus on the self, then who needs help? And it is a tired trope, but it's a trope because there's truth in it that put your mask on first yes. and then help others. Well, and when we help ourselves, we help others. And we I'm do. not like, it could sound very like individualistic, and I don't mean it that way, but as much right. as like, if you go around trying to help people that have not asked, right. that isn't. That's but, not helping anybody. But literally worrying about you and then also looking at someone and going, how can I help? That works because if they go, no, I'm good right now, then great. Let awesome. me know if you need me. Right. But we spend a lot of energy. Like trying to change people's minds yeah. and open people's eyes yeah. and wake up sheeple. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> She's trying to be crazy. That's me crazy. Um, and what are some signs and milestones? People in a, oh, remember people, you say it. Oh, people... Like people, if you feel like you're in a body. If you if you know that you're in a body versus you are a body, knowing that there's the difference between being in a body and being a body. Right. I think is the, is the, is the shift. That's it's what like, really came out. Yeah, yeah, I know that I'm in a body. This right. is the vehicle versus mm -hmm. my existence is my body. Right. I am a soul having a human experience. Yes. Versus I am a person. Yes. Right. Yeah, so I think that's, you know, for the people who are asking for signs and milestones, mm -hmm. that seems like a really big one. Um, and then it came out, quit fighting the body. Do yeah. what the body needs. And, you know, th there's, like, people say, oh, well, my body wants cookies. It's like, well, does your body really? No, your brain wants want cookies. Your, right. Your, your emotions. Want your emotions want cookies. Which is okay. We're allowed to have cookies. Cookies are awesome. But if, you, you know, drink some water. Your body probably <laughs> wants water. It's like... You know, there's a difference between am I really hungry or am I thirsty? Or am I bored? Or am I bored? Or am I sad? Really sad. Yeah, that was going with the next one. Yep. So sometimes the lesson is being in a body, except being in a body. I think I was just talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can That's see hard. that. I can see I that. that. I struggle. Yeah. 
And so those were the biggest hits about Ascension, things that would be of most concern to many people. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else that came from the session that would be helpful? Um, I think I think it's interesting continue, always can, you know to talk about the body, like what is the how we deal with and, and work with the body um, and how we perceive body and then you also how this idea of different realities like yeah when we were i remember in middle school there would be a teacher that would come in and like be like oh my god and like yell something really loud and then leave and then they'd come back in and be like now what did you remember what i said and we would all have like a different answer right. because we are all we are hearing things differently based on right. our past experiences like i almost feel like we build a this beautiful filter on positive and negative that we, when we look at things, it goes through it. And so if things, if there's a, if there's a word, if there's a word we don't like, we will change that, that message coming at us. Right. Um, and it's important to recognize our filter mm -hmm. and what that is, our bias, whatever you want to call it, because when we don't think we have one is usually when it's being bombarded. Oh, interesting. So, like, people that are like, I don't have a filter. I see things for what they are. I'm like, you know, we all have a filter. The more that we, you know, really, truly embrace what that filter is, what are the main pieces of our identity that's coloring our experience of reality is when we are able to kind of be thoughtful about what we're doing. If we, if we think everything we think is correct and it's not being challenged cha and it's not being colored by what we've experienced, mm then we're that that's not real that's not how it works mm -mm. that's just that's not how our bodies and brains are built we are built to pay attention to our surroundings and then shift accordingly it's the same thing right so it's putting the ex the experience in the human experience yes right just fully being human responding yeah. as a human would like survival yes wanting to be included i mean these these things we respond now we hopefully we're going to do these things with kindness uh-huh and to not harm others but yeah the human experience like what is it you know if you want to call a guy call a guy that's part of being a human if you want to call it what call the guy like call i need to call the guy <laughs> If what if the most human experience is you know wanting love being right loved, some of that stuff so so, so what if it hurts? That's part of being a human. Right. And well, and that came through for you big time, too. Mm -hmm. You know, in your and personal I know that, life. And I want to, don't want to dismiss things. Sometimes things hurt more. And that we they shouldn't do. go diet, like chasing waterfalls necessarily. But part of being a human is, is experiencing the, the hard stuff. Heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's see if there's anything here. Um, Sometimes it just it's just the earth when when things get difficult. It's just the earth. Just experience it, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. All right. So that was we'll we'll do this again and hopefully the recording. Well, I usually use two recording devices and did I this time? No, I did not. My other recording device was on my table, but I didn't turn it on. So um, yeah, the recording device ate the recording. So we'll do this again though. You got it. Awesome. Anytime.